Welcome to the Total Connect Show. My name is Kevin Davani. My very special guest today again is Nopara. Nopara, uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. Um, would you would you maybe introduce yourself a little bit um, for the new, you know very new listeners? Hi, Kevin. Thanks for having me. So I'm a developer at Wasabi Wallet, and I'm also a privacy researcher. So that's pretty much about me. Mm-hmm. Um, Napara, so we had a, um, uh, I had a, a recently a, a talk with um, with Mayank Chapra. He's a sort of a UX UI designer, and um, we we covered a you know a spectrum of topics and points. Uh, very focused also on the usability or user friendliness of the coin join uh, Wasabi Wallet. And uh, we also, of course, talked about the Samurai and Whirlpool uh, coin mixing, you know, the, the pro and contra, the disadvantage, disadvantages, what is lacking, um, the, the, you know, the overall usability for, for newbies uh, intending to, you know, to coin join, to mix their coins for the sake of um, uh, privacy, um, fungibility, right? Um, can we start off? Uh, what, Napara, what would you say, why would someone um, have to do coin joining in general? What, what's, the, what's the sole purpose of coin joining? It's to restore the privacy that you should already have by default. And we don't have that yet. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it, it's a nuanced question. Do, do we have the privacy? Uh, so far, as far it looks like we do, but you know the blockchain is there forever, so this can be this can be ruined retroactively for the past. So, so I, I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they never gonna get enough data to to make the privacy a really big problem. But maybe they will. Uh, so maybe you just want to make sure that. Uh, you are private now and not just regret it later. Mm-hmm. So um, let's let's start from beginning, uh, Napara. So the procedure is like that. Um, I, as the average person, go on an exchange. Um, unfortunately, and usually it's, it's obligated to do KYC. So I do a KYC um, and then I, of course, I want to, you know, uh, before I want to, transfer directly to my hardware wallet i you know go on wasabi and try to do a coin join uh you know mixing the coins um and the thing is um the 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 first problems i see in the wasabi wallet is that there's a minimum threshold of a minimum amount that you have to put into uh so it's not so it's like 0.099 uh bitcoin right so anything below that, I would have to start accumulating until I have that uh, that minimum threshold, and then I can start coin joining. Correct? Okay. Yes. So, does coin joining? Because that was the point we we had a discussion in the in the Telegram group, also on uh, the in the other group. Uh, somebody said that the 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 exchange knows anyway how I spend my coins after coin joining. So if you do a KYC on an exchange, does it really help to, it really, it, uh, coin joining helps only when I, tra- when I sort of, when I transact the coin joint coins uh, with a third party after that, right? Oh, how, how, what, what's your thoughts on, how would you explain that to, uh, to our listeners? Uh, for me, it sounds like nonsense. Uh, I, I don't know what he meant by it, so I'm not familiar with the context. Mm-hmm. But what you just said that the exchange knows what you do with your Bitcoin software, your coin joining is it's it's nonsense. Mm-hmm. Okay, but does the coin joining uh, does it does it um, does it er- it does not erase the KYC data, right? So the exchange always knows it, it's still connected. It will always stay connected, right? Uh, where I buy the coins, right? Because of, because of the KYC. So the coin joining itself does not erase the KYC data. So, so of course not. Uh, 
yes, the exchange knows how much you bought and when you bought and who you are. Uh, you put it in to, let's say, join market wallet, you coin join it, and then you spend it. The exchange doesn't know much about that spend that happens after the join market coin join, for example. But now the KYC data is not erased. <laughs> okay, okay. Um... Okay, so Napar, there's been a, a, because I've just been following, because it's too technical for me, there's been some kind of discussion going on within the Wasabi Telegram group. Uh, um, I can't, I, I, I'm not able to follow it. It's just too technical. What, what, are, what are the problems, difficulties, the challenges, or what are the, uh, there's some topic also about reusable or addresses that are reused. Um, Oh, um, maybe accidentally or something like that, which is again bad for privacy. Uh, what are just just make maybe an overview? Can you give us an overview? Like what, what are what are the problems? What are the challenges? Or also in terms of of um, user friendly development, user experience, user interface for the newbie. Just you know, I'm just gonna let you you know explain maybe. Uh, give a bigger picture of what what are what are the problems right now that uh, uh, the wasabi users, especially the new ones, are, are about uh, to face. Okay, so what I think the largest uh, usability issue is the coin control feature. Is that when you open your wallet, ideally you would see a balance, and then you would send the money and receive the money, and your balance would go up and down, but that's not how it works in Wasabi because you, in order to be able to private, you have to get familiar with UTXOs or you don't really because we have an abstraction and our abstraction for UTXOs is actually coins. So that works out fine. Uh, but I think that's the scariest thing, uh, what, you, what you encounter in Wasabi. Um, Oh, on the other hand, it's a good learning experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that 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 would be, yeah, it it would be good if we could remove that somehow uh, in some some future project when we get get the get that far with the mixing that we can remove the coin control. I can see a lot of people being very against that. Uh, but uh, I mean, if if we would be able to, then then yeah, we would like to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> what about the fees? That, can you can you elaborate a little bit on the fees and the coordinator fees? How much is that? I mean, is that I mean, there is no free lunch. I, I get that, but do you, in your own opinion, do you think the fees could be lowered or? Oh, okay, so I just actually done a test uh, in August and I'm actually repeating this test right now so I can tell you exact numbers. I was mixing with uh, 3.5 Bitcoin for one week and this and I achieved about 300 anonymity set for all my uh, transactions sorry all my coins and uh, the fees were 0 0.35 percent mm -hmm. now what it should be is 0 0.3 percent uh, however uh, 0 0.3 percent for for 100 peers you are joining together but as you saw, I, I, I achieved 300 anonymity set and it was only 0 0.35. So what, what's going on there is that uh, when you are remixing, you're not really paying the whole fee. That's, that's the whole story there. That, uh, that's, that's how it ended up. In August, the fees were low. The network fees, now I'm talking about the network fees, not the coordinator fees. Uh, so that probably resulted in in a uh, more gradual decrease of the denomination, which mean, meant uh, remixing Wasabi outputs uh, did not 
resulting in basically almost any fees except the network fees. And now I'm doing this test again and we'll see uh, what's going to happen next Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you explain a little bit what is zero link? What, what, what is a zero yeah, link? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's the whole thing started uh, with with Tumblebit. Uh, Tumblebit is a privacy protocol uh, similar to CoinJoin. Uh, it's a round based, uh, and I realized that it's not enough to to implement something like Tumblebit or CoinJoin. You actually have to pay attention a lot of other things, and that's zero link paying attention to a lot of other things how you broadcast your transactions how you establish your wallet balance right because if you implement a coin join and you are still asking a central server about your all your bitcoin addresses then it can de-anonymize you right that's why samurai wallet is a fraud uh, that's what they are doing basically and you know can you this elaborate is on enough. that can you can you say why 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 it is why samurai is like that i mean oh because what you is wrong so yeah okay it's it's a good question so because it's not an obvious problem to solve every light wallet sends back the the expop key which is all your bitcoin addresses past and future bitcoin addresses to a backend server Except SPV wallets because they are doing some some magic there, uh, and Electrum, which is sending to random nodes, except the back, not, not to not a backend server. The point is that it's it's not an easy problem to solve. The only way we had for this is that you download Bitcoin Core, keep one hundred, uh, two hundred, whatever gigabyte of data on your disk, and you check the transactions from your disk so no one can figure out which transactions you are interested in. And this was one of the innovation in Wasabi that we figured out or more the Lightning Network, Lightning Labs developers figured out how to do uh, Light Wallet in a private way. So yeah, what's why Samurai is not doing this because it's, it's, it's not easy to implement and you know, people don't think about this uh, too much and they are just looking at marketing and I guess they think they can get away with it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, some people actually rely on our software with their lives, you know, it's, uh, you shouldn't be this careless or at least straight about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I understand. So. Um Napara, so let's go to the practical uh, pro uh, approach again. Um, so somebody has a okay. Somebody has bought a fraction of a Bitcoin on an exchange. Um, ordinarily, it's a KYC <laughs> exchange. You buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. You wanna, you know, tra before you transfer it to your hardware wallet, you wanna, you know, you send it to a co to your coin uh, to your Wasabi wallet. Then you find out, okay, the minimum amount is zero point zero nine nine Bitcoin. It's not zero point zero five. Uh, uh, this is where where I say, okay, this is the like one advantage with the Samurai Whirlpool. Just generally speaking, just from the threshold amount, uh, you can choose. I think between zero point zero five and other amounts, right? Um, so, um, and then um, of course you um, there is uh, there is this um, this notice. Uh, that pops up or somewhere it says, you know, hardware, you cannot coin John hardware wallet. Mm -hmm. So are we, uh, would you say you guys are still with your, with your team still far away from integrating the hardware wallet? So it becomes, because this is the essential goal. We want to make it by default, right? Isn't that the, the ultimate goal? The ultimate intention is to make it easier, user-friendly, intuitive, and by default, automatic. Um, and when you look at all these, you know, buttons and uh, and features and functions, it is definitely not user friendly. I mean, uh, I'm I'm just you know extrapolating from my experience to other people, and I know it from other testimonials. So, is there a plan? Is there a strategy? What's the roadmap until we reach that you know 
uh, first of all, lowering the threshold of, of coin joining, uh, whatever 0. Mm -hmm. 0. something, 0. 0.2, 0. 0.05 or something like that. Um, and then also having these features, just, you know, the, the, the basic function, the basic function of coin joining, just make it by default. And then as soon as that is, uh, and I can integrate my hardware wallet, and then with a push of a button, you know, then transfer it then, I'll, you know, eventually to my hardware wallet. Is there a roadmap to that? Yeah, I mean, we are working towards these things. Uh, <laughs> it just, it, these are just hard problems and a uh, lot of work. Uh, it's it's not something that's, well, okay, we, we, we don't want hardware wallets to be coin joining. <laughs> no, that's that's not the case. We, we, we definitely want that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do, you a, guys, do you guys work with UX UI designers? I mean, constantly? Is that, or is that not a priority at the moment? No, we, we, don't, we don't have any. Uh, we have uh, UI design, not designers, but people who know how to do the UI because we, we, we kind of have a larger problem than, than that uh, on, on the underlying layer. I'm not sure you're familiar with .NET Core, but uh, Microsoft a couple of years ago came out with the uh, with, oh, okay, we are gonna open source everything and we are gonna make cross-platform everything and we are gonna concentrate on the cloud and web and mobile. Now, the problem with that is they are not concentrating on the desktop. So mm -hmm. uh, there are open source projects and those open source projects enable us to create a desktop GUI. And those open source projects are pretty beta. Uh, so what we had to do is that we we had to hire people who are working on those open source projects, and now they are working on their projects and and Wasabi because because we have more underlying problems with that. So no, they are not designers, but they are some ones who who know how to do stuff. Uh, in 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 the UI, so but now they are definitely not designers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you uh, would that be would that at this stage it's not maybe it's not it's not that prioritized because you have really more fundamental problems with the let's say technological development or I don't know the the, the, the programming the whatever it is right uh, uh, yeah it's it, so I would be happy if there is a designer who can also code but i mean mm -hmm. you create drawings uh, someone has to do their work and figure out what you missed you know mm -hmm. because when you actually try to code it it's uh, it turns out oh this is not working that way so so i i believe someone if if you're doing design then you should actually write the code for that too and mm -hmm. we can check uh, we can review it because drawings are nice um, but sometimes even those are doable <laughs> <laughs> okay. um can you um could you could you elaborate a little bit on the features and functions of wasabi just for the you know for the yeah people sure. who wanna, uh, whatever that is, an anonymity set, uh, an anonymity sets, uh, the minimum amount, again, maybe the the um, the features that, let me, let me just take a look. Uh, you know, when you have the receive addresses, uh, why can't I, for example, erase or, de you know, delete afterwards after I use them, even though I label them, of course, which is, of course, very useful. Why cannot is there a possibility to erase, delete those uh, receive generated addresses, for example? Uh, so it's, we are getting into, I, I'm not sure how significant is this, but it could be implemented. There are some technical issues because as you know, how hardware wallet works is that you have one master private key seed and you are deriving the address from there so okay you 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 derive one address you erase it and then you derive another one you erase it from the eyes of the user and you do it like 50 
hundred more times, mm -hmm. and then the user loses his wallet. He wants to recover, mm -hmm. and oh shit, I don't have money in my wallet. People tell me it doesn't work. It, uh, but I, I think it's doable. Yeah, I, I open an issue on GitHub. I, I think it can be done. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right. Uh, can you can you uh, can you guide a little bit our listeners like what 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 what, what uh, like the practical approach okay you you uh, uh, somebody sends the, the you know uh, his or her uh, bitcoin from the exchange to the uh, receive generated address on coin join on wasabi uh, can you just you know go through those steps and and maybe also define the, the the you know the select features you know select all select all private select all non private uh, what what do people have to you know to uh, pay attention to and um, you know what is important what is crucial what is what is critical maybe in in the process of coin joining a very practical approach yes. Um... I don't want to say two basic things, but you just open the coin join tab, select the coins that you want to coin join and click coin join. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not sure about the level. It, it seems to me easy, but my other people don't find it easy. Yeah, you know, there's these three boxes. It says select all, select all private, select yeah, all non-private. Yeah. What, what does it mean? So this is actually a funny st story because the select coins, select must select coins are actually a development failure <laughs> because oh, okay. how, how I would, would have imagined that people select coins, pick coins manually based on the labels that they see. Mm -hmm. But then it just... <laughs> It just become people were asking for the select or select uh, select private coins. So select coins, those are in anonymity set range. Those only means that. So people were asking for that, and and I implemented it, and it's very convenient. It just uh, sometimes can create situations when if you would have done it manually, then you would have checked the labels, and if there are two labels that you don't want to really uh, join together but separate, that uh, that two coin don't want to be in the same, uh, uh, then it it can create problematic situations. So, so yeah, that's that's a usability compromise there, right there, from privacy, you know. Mm -hmm. But what's what's the best or safest thing to do to select all when once you you know, transfer your Bitcoin to the to your coin join gen receive address? Uh, uh, because there's these three boxes, and when I hover, when I hover above the these functions, for example, select all. Okay, select all. Select all private. It says coins that have acquired the privacy target. I mean, as a user, I, I wouldn't know as a beginner, I wouldn't know what it means. And then it says select all non-private, this third box that you can click. And when I hover above that, it says coins that have not acquired the privacy target. So, and then the anonymity, I think it's the standard is 50. So should I leave it at 50 and then select all? Is that the safest thing to do? I just want to, you know, have a, maybe a, a, a rough guide for the, for the new user. What is, it, what is it supposed to do? Yeah, so, so what you want is to make as many uh, coins above your privacy target uh, with coin joins. So right, uh, it's, there is a big uh, shield icon there and that's your target, which is 50 Bitcoin, uh, the green one. Uh, you can change it, but whatever, 50, 50 Bitcoin, sorry, 50 anonymity 50 sets. Anonymity so that set, is, yeah. your, that yeah. is your target there. And you want to reach that with as many coins as you want. And then when you have to spend the coins that you want to, to always uh, select from the most private ones, now, what we should actually do is that uh, there, there isn't really much difference between the private coins. So those shouldn't even be shown like, uh, like 100 small coins. The, those kind of should be shown as one pool of, 
mm-hmm. queens and and that might be more a better way to to understand it uh yeah that 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 could be better it would ruin the one coin it was one uh one u t x so a mental model, but maybe it would be better understandable for people who don't know what UTXOs are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Something like that in that. Um, d- does the the time frame or, or, or other or this or ask differently, uh, what does it depend on so that how, how long does it take to coin join and then transfer those coin joined uh, Bitcoin to the hardware wallet. I mean, are there, do you guys have sort of approximate time frames, or does it depend on the anonymity uh, set, like how long it's going to take till you know it, it, till it's completed, you know, and then I can finally transfer it to my hardware wallet. Yes, so you are coming from a direction that you are using hardware wallets, uh, and uh, it's it's not actually figured out. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, I believe implementing hardware wallet support was actually another development decision failure because uh, well it looked easy at first and we implemented it but we have so many problems i'm right now working on that too and you know it doesn't bring towards the privacy vision that we have and it it creates friction because now you want to use hardware wallet with coin joins, but you can't because you have to be online for signing. So it, it creates problems. Uh, it, it should have been implemented after we, we get to our privacy vision. Uh, but, uh, but I mean, I was, I was weak and said yes to people who were asking for it so mm-hmm. now i implemented it and they are not happy because they can't coin join and i am not happy because mm-hmm. i'm working on that all the time instead of actually uh you know working on privacy so so yeah i i, I think that was a bad decision now we have to live with it what can we do with it uh, well one thing could be is that hardware wallets uh, somehow support some kind of scripting that we can use coin joins with hardware wallets another thing that because it's it's very unlikely at this point another thing could be that uh, we create intermediate wallet uh, in fact uh, it doesn't even have to leave your memory that wallet uh, so if <laughs> I'm not sure I should go into it, but I uh, just had a thought that uh, you have a hardware wallet, you create a wallet that doesn't get serialized to the disk, mm-hmm. but you send money to that wallet from your hardware wallet. Now you create a transaction back to your hardware wallet, you serialize it to the disk, but don't broadcast it. Uh, the point is that from this hot wallet, you can now mix and you can now mix into your hardware wallet uh, and you if you would shut down your computer then you would lose your private key and all your coins except that the transactions that goes back the money into the hardware wallet is in your disk but the transaction doesn't have the private key so it would be well almost as safe yeah, just as safe as, as 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 a hardware wallet because no one can access my software's memory. Uh, well, at least we thought that after there were some vulnerabilities, but normally you wouldn't be able to access it. So anyway, it's it's just something I I, I thought about. Um, so yeah, we we could do things. Uh, I don't think this this is our focus, but there are there are interesting things uh, mm-hmm. to to do there. Other uh, no, part, other topics like liquidity is that a, is that a topic that um, that is of concern? I mean, lack of liquidity and lack of you know uh, uh, sufficient uh, users, or I don't know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like liquidity. Yeah. It, yes. It was, but not anymore. I believe we have a pretty good liquidity for the last three to four months. Uh, uh, I'm I'm happy with that. 
-hmm. The maximum that we can reach is one coin join every two to five minutes. That if we would take over the current centralized mixers volume, that that would be probably the limit that it can go with with the hundred peer setup. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. Okay, so what uh, I know, I think I asked that question, but but uh, let me let me rephrase that. How, how long does it take to like if I have like a minimum amount of bitcoins, the zero point zero nine nine bitcoin? I want to coin join it. How long does it take till it's completed? I mean, in average, uh, maximum two hours. Okay, all right, like maximum. So and, and, in but, average, but it can, can be, be faster. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It can be faster than that. I mean, but it's uh, like yeah, yes, of course. Oh, good, good. Can be. <laughs> okay. Well, wonderful. Uh, no part. So yeah, I mean, I have. Uh, it, it's already like too much technical for me, but um, uh, I can I can somehow make a rhyme out of this. And uh, you've done really beautiful explanations. Uh, uh, is there anything like important that you want to you know share with us? Like, what is the uh, is there anything like su super important that you're working right now that you can share with us right at this moment, or the roadmap or whatever? Yeah, yes, I can give you a small roadmap. A uh, couple of months ago, I opened a GitHub issue that uh, roadmap how to replace Nopara. <laughs> so, so that's 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 what I'm working on, and we are working on right now. And what 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 we have there, uh, I'm resigning as the CTO, resigning as the code maintainer, giving these things out to David and uh, Lucas. Uh, they are doing pretty good job for Wasabi. Um, I'm stabilizing the hardware wallet integrations. Hopefully, it's gonna be finished today. Uh, I really hope. Uh, I'm going to work on multi wallet loading and instant wallet load. Right? You might have noticed that everything is pretty slow, or or rather the wallet load is pretty slow. So that's that's a terrible user experience there. So that has to be fixed. It's it's not obvious, but uh, but that has to be fixed. Uh, now the next thing is that Bitcoin core integration, which I would like to do because if this thing becomes a business, then it's never going to happen, right? That's, that doesn't make sense, but it's very important for network at a point of view. Um, now, I'm, I'm probably going to, to do it uh, then. And, and then finally, I'm free and start researching privacy. I think I have a lot of things in my mind. I just, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't, can't wait to start, you know. <laughs> Great, yeah. All right, uh, yeah, that's about it with my questions. Um, is that like, do you want to share any links or um, I mean, I'm gonna put your uh, Twitter handle anyway in the show notes, but are there any like links people can follow up or if they want to educate themselves? Or... So yeah, yeah, come and contribute to Wasabi and on GitHub, ZK Snacks, uh, wallet wasabi that's the code but if you can't code then go on the docs repo wasabi dots uh, this is created by max hillebrand and a uh, lot of people are contributing who cannot code just also come and contribute to the mastering lightning network book i i really enjoy fixing typos there <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> Okay, and for newbies or you know people just want to get into the you know the uh, acquire a little bit of knowledge like what would you what would you recommend them because that's that's too technical what would you recommend like to newbies? Yeah, actually, I would recommend to come and contribute to the Mastering Lightning Network book because it's going to be something that developers along the way uh, for ten twenty or maybe 50 years are going to look at that as a reference and and it just barely, barely started so 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 yeah it's 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 exciting to to be there and i can't do anything but fixing typos but uh but even that's exciting you know <laughs> <laughs> um 
last question. I don't know whether that is relevant. To be honest with you, is is a full node? The full node is that is that um is that something that uh, is is somehow compatible with? Uh... Yes. So y yes, it's a good question uh, because that was that was a thing that hey. I have a Bitcoin full node running on my computer when I'm using Wasabi and it would take me five minutes to connect them together to get the blocks from my Bitcoin core full node. Then why wouldn't I do that? Okay, so I implemented it and it getting to the next Wasabi release, we kind of wanted to be silent about it, but we did not succeed. Max Brand was anyway <laughs> so so the thing is it it's only getting bitcoin blocks from your computer so it's not a proper full node integration it just uh, just uh, it's 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 like nothing it's like why would you download blocks from someone else on the internet if you can do it locally from your computer and you don't even need to do any configurations on Wasabi, you're just gonna do it automatically. So that was the idea there. And people think it's a full node integration and do all kind of crazy things with it. Uh, but, but yeah, so, 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 so I want to integrate a full node properly, but this is just, uh, just uh, let's fetch blocks from the closest source instead of the internet. So yeah, that's the difference there. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, Nopara, um, I'm finished with my question. Is there anything uh, else you want to share? Um, that you no, think I, is really I, important? I don't have. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. You're good. Okay. Well, thanks so much uh, for sharing your time, your knowledge, and I hope to you know have you maybe uh, again on on a, on a panel discussion, which I'm, uh, to be honest, envisioning with you and a couple of others uh, yeah, whenever you have some good. time. Yeah, Sounds wonderful. Good for me. Yeah. So thank you so much and uh, yeah, talk to you soon and yeah, have a good day. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. We're thank looking you, forward for the panel. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast show by K. Bandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Awesome Economics, The Hardest and Scarcest Money Ever Created in Human History, Bitcoin.